The hidden story behind Bodhi consists of four prospectors in a California valley north of Mono Lake. The gold hunters were mining continuously until a blizzard overtook the mining outpost and killed one of the discoverers, Bodhi Wintry, in which gave the entire town the name Bodhi by 1862. The district had made an agreement to accept this name. During the time of Bodhi's peak, it used to actually be the most second populated town right in California during its peak now. As you look around, it's just a big, complete ghost town. It's hard to just picture these things as it was before versus how it was now. I mean, actually witnessing this through my eyes, it kind of gives a good perspective of how, th how life was before. There's even the stove, which is great. The stove still sits there. The booming city in 1879. This is actually Bodie, right back in 1879 when, it's act when it was at its peak. When a lot of the population was so high up, all the buildings were still standing there and now over time it's just the big one the most known ghost towns that are still remaining as of today it's interesting to walk into history like this and see how things actually looked before versus the times of now i mean the way the kitchens look before is very dull like everything's such a dull feel it's it's a lot different very different like i really do wish i could just have one day of my life to just go back in a time Build a time machine or something because like I'm just looking at everything and it's just so like it's so different versus how time is now and time was before. I wonder how life was, I wonder how people like would hang around, what activities would do, all of that. It's 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 interesting. I mean, it's so different, it makes me just want to experience the differences. Differences from before to now. So right now this is actually a huge barn that still sits inside Bodhi itself. There's a well right there. There's a lot of like the the buildings and everything. Let's look inside what's right here. Okay, it looks like we actually peek in. Oh my god! Hold on guys, check this out. So this, this is the old carriages that they would actually use during the 1800s to even get around. Usually at like the tip of it you have like a horse pulling and everything. But yeah, this is the carriages. I mean, wow. I can't believe it still sits on the wheels that it's on right now and even the seats are the seats are still pretty good and everything the entire the entire carriage and all that still stands in like perfect condition so this is why I'm just so interested to see I mean things like this I mean I read it instead of like you know reading outside of like a history book or anything like that it's like I'm actually experiencing everything right in the pr perspective of actually seeing them through their own eyes during their history times I mean look at you could I'm actually seeing the buildings 1927 Dodge Graham. Just look how old the vehicle is, how different. So all the props and all of this, these are all props from the 1800s that came, came about and still stand as of 2016. And look at this. This is even a saw that they use to cut like legit um, wood and all of that. That's all stacked right here. And it still stands as of today it's really interesting if you check out this building guys it's still standing i mean i mean i wonder what's holding it together it's really interesting it's really like falling apart and things are like collapsed inside it but you know it looks like we could go in so let's go in you really can't like go so far in it i was just so curious to check out the inside because like literally i'm, I'm standing inside a building that's halfway falling apart right now which is crazy indeed but Man, look at all the logs and everything that still remains around the planks and all of that. Wonder, I wonder what this could have been for. I mean, it's not much like words on it to like give me a, a little description or anything, but it's just like a a metal thing, <laughs> a metal thing inside the the building. I give the owners props to holding all these buildings together. I mean, look at this one. It's still it's completely falling apart and everything, but they still make it stand and still preserve it as of today. And it's still like the deteriorated and all of that but if you look at it it's still standing and winter season actually happens around here so even with all the snow it, it's they still have it standing as of today and a crazy interesting thing is also all of the props that they have in this place is actually props made from the years ago but they still keep it remaining still sitting around which is great so this is probably like a an old saw machine from like the old historical times but in 2016 they still have it sitting here with all the logs and the planks and everything just still kind of stacked right there
close of the curtain Stay on the phone So Look, as you can tell, all these buildings are so differently structured from buildings now. How long have these buildings all been standing here for? So a lot of these buildings are from the 1800s, uh, with the exception of just a couple. What happened is actually, um, as people left this town, um, a, a more rich family in town actually hired caretakers to watch over this place. Right. So this is about how it would have looked in the uh, 1960s, so 1962 when this became a state park. Okay. And some of the towns nearby, they weren't looked after, so all that's really left of those is just stone foundations. Okay. So you can't really go there and see what you see here. That's why uh, Bodhi's so unique compared right. to a lot of the other uh, towns you'll see around here. Some people will uh, they'll get a mining town and they'll try to repair it to make it look the way it was uh, back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. That's, that's how a lot of ghost towns we've been to, actually. They're, they're all focused on mining. Yeah, yeah. I know um, this is probably one of the most populated towns during their time, right? Yes, yeah, so this is actually uh, one of the top 10 cities in California at the time. Um, this was kind of the hub. So you had several towns around here. Uh, you had Aurora, Masonic, Monoville, Big Meadows, which is now Bridgeport. And you just had a lot of communities around here. So people would actually come from uh, the outlying areas and they'd come to Bodie. Uh, this is kind of the hub, so you'd get like a stagecoach ride out to uh, Hawthorne, Nevada, or just wherever. They'd have a, this is a double jack, so you have one guy holding it on their oh. shoulder like this. Yeah. And they have a guy behind them with like an eight pound sledgehammer, so he hits it, yep. and chips it a little bit, and the guy turns it a little bit. So you really, you really have to trust the guy with the hammer behind you with this. Right. I Dude, it's like the movies, so they after. just smash into the wall just to get through. Yeah. <laughs> That's after a while, it. they actually quit using that. Yeah. And they started using a air powered uh, drill. And the thing is they didn't have like hoses yep. for the air like we do now, so it was pretty dangerous and it was pretty heavy. Gotcha. They'd actually hire a pretty strong man with no family uh, so that he could carry the thing around and if there was any accident they wouldn't have to pay his family uh, the $75, uh, the family of uh, uh, any dead miner. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. For this place? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. For us, we're trying to manage with what we could get. All right, so right there, you're saying that this place was actually burnt down, right? Uh, it's not really burnt down. It's just charring. Charring, gotcha. So these are charrings, yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to figure out. So like a fire kind of definitely caused this, right? Yeah. Oh wow. I don't know if that was a uh, an old fire if someone snuck in here and made a fire happen. <laughs> yeah, up on the uh, the train depot on the hill. Uh, you can actually see it from here. There's a water tower, and then to the left of that, that's our, uh, our train station. Uh, it's off this, so. Okay. But that was actually dedicated only to wood. Uh, they needed wood to power the mills here. Yeah. Uh, one mill, the standard mill we have here, would be 20 cords of wood a day, so 20 pickup truck loads. Yeah. Um, all the mills combined up here, all nine of them, would use about 300 cords of wood. So you needed a lot of wood. So they had the uh, the rail station dedicated just to wood. Oh, nice. uh, I guess. Some uh, family got lost out here in the winter and tried to use the uh, fireplace in there. And the place didn't burn down, but there's a lot of uh, soot around. Pretty nice view. So you have the uh, jail out that way, you have the bank, and then you have the, uh, the stamp mill. So I'm kind of just zoning around, like looking around, and randomly we just came across this old dog house. Yeah, so it looks like parts of it is the uh, the unrolled cans that they'll use for siding. Yeah. But this more uh, detailed stuff, they actually had a uh, tin wallpaper that they could put up in the houses. So it was very fancy textured wallpaper. So this. <laughs> okay. You can see some parts where it's not so rusted here. Yeah. So this is probably how it actually like how it looked before things just got rusted over time. But that's cool, so that's really what they use to kind of just keep things like still standing for their time, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they'd, uh, unrolled, they'd unrolled cans. Uh, you can see in some places on the roofs they'd use it for roofing or they'd use it for siding to kind of have some extra insulation since winter's so harsh up here or just to kind of keep the mice out or whatever. Gotcha. One of the owners, I, I've, I'm not entirely sure about this story, but I think one of the owners passed away. And, uh, for a while there it looked kind of like it looked it looked like it kind of said Wheaton and Hollis, right? Uh, but they later found out that it was just Wheaton and Lurs, and then it became the Bodie Hotel. 
So the overlapping letters kind of made it look that way. So Jonah <laughs> gave us a really good and big tour of Bodhi. It kind of showed me all around the place and the ropes and the history and everything. So definitely a great pleasure to talk with this guy and definitely a great tour with him. Um, but pre pretty much this is it guys. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to check out the other guys. Um, we are heading out tomorrow. We got Yost Yosemite? Yosemite, Yosemite <laughs> National <laughs> Park after this. So we are out. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to check out my other vlogs guys.